I thought this drawing is going to be easy, but of course it's never going to be easy. And the reason I underestimated it is I usually focus on drawing the body. I do a lot of spicy figure drawing. And the body, the anatomy and all that jazz is probably, in my opinion, the most difficult part. However, this is a group selfie. That means that the focus would be drawing the faces. Which is all well and good. That's group practice. I can manage, but the problem is, I don't really have an established way of drawing the head, as weird as that sounds, I don't really have a good way, a battle tester strategy to start the game. If you play chess, it's equivalent to not studying any opening theories. Which is fine, I think people like Casablanca just obliterated everyone in tournaments regardless, but anyway, I don't have a solid way to start, so I'm going to remedy that. Now the good thing about the anime style is that it's actually really optimized. It is really geometric. I actually think that everyone should start with drawing anime style art. If you draw anything realistic, you can get distracted by the details. But anime, not so much. So here, I start with a circle, which is going to tell us the cranium. Now the convenient part about it is that when the head is tilted slightly forward, the lower part of the circle is going to land exactly on the nose. When the head is tilted slightly upward, or I think eye level as well, then it's going to land on the mouth. You'll see an example of that later. Now most of the time when we ask how do we draw something, say how do we draw the head, it's actually not an effective question. Because I noticed that there are actually at least two questions that we are asking at the same time. One how do we do it as in the methodology of it and in this case i use the circle to tell us the cranium and then we have the front plane to tell us the face and we need the center line then we can tell the chin and then we need two sides to tell us the cheek and the jaw and the cheek and the jaw they align with each other horizontally and the alignment is parallel to that of the eyes unless the perspective is crazy and then behind the jaw you have the ear this is the methodology. This is the how. Things like the Loomis head method, it tells you this. But we also need to ask, what is the proportion? That is something that no one can actually teach. You just need to do study, find your favorite style, find your favorite proportion, and then memorize that. And then draw it so many times that you can internalize that. And I would say most of the time, the problem is not that we don't know how to draw something. We just don't know what is the proportion. We don't know what is the pattern that we want to use. And that's something that you just need to figure out yourself. And for the experienced artist, the situation is actually the opposite. At some point, they just cease to ask a better way to draw. Now that's the whole trusting your method kind of things. Like sure, if your method is good, perfect. But if it's trash, it's not going to help much. And then they just spam as much practice as they can. Focusing on the what and forget to ask how. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is study and practice, they go together. And the other thing that you may have noticed straight away is that instead of doing the overall proportion, figuring out the positioning, like what you do in say traditional drawing, traditional painting, I tried that, it didn't work, it's frustrating to do everything at once. Treat each part individually. I try to finish at least the construction part of each figure separately and then I relocate them, and then I fiddle with the size. It is one of the perks of just doing digitally. It's so powerful. Continue to develop the faces, connecting the cheek to the chin, the chin to the jaw, figuring out the size and location of the eyes before actually putting down the eyes. And about the eyes, actually about drawing the faces. If you look at the reference, the anime actually chose to draw they chose to use a much rounder style because it would make the characters look cuter and that fit the overall kind of vibe of the anime. Personally, I like to draw with sharper edges. I like to draw smaller faces. And when it comes to drawing faces, people sometimes they will say that, oh, they, the, the faces are the same or the faces are different. The faces are never different. Well, most of the time they're the same because like I said before, Anime style is really standardized. They are usually just the same faces, the same setup, the same proportion. The one and only thing that makes all the difference when it comes to the impression is the eyes. Different shape or different sizes. And, and in this case, I want to make Liu a little bit cooler. 
so I would like to test out smaller eyes but for some reason it just didn't work so I just went with the original which is fine as to Kitachan, Kitachan is always cute so larger eyes and that would suffice the head tilts slightly to the side and that even enhances the cuteness of her the slightly tilted head is actually one of the most common head and in this case a 30 degree head is even more common the line quality here is obnoxious which is fine because they serve their purposes which are telling us the structure the gesture and the location or even the proportion of the figure and the hair of Kitajang is actually the most complicated one it's actually the most generic one but it's also the most complicated one it makes me think that Kitajang is the daughter of the entire production team they just got so much love for her and I'm not complaining that and as to Nijika when I look at the reference I actually don't think that I'm looking at the reference when I was drawing it maybe I should have but anyway when I check out the reference I noticed that Nijika got rounder eyes the edges of the eyes are tilted slightly downward and I don't know I, I just found that a little bit too generic and I wanted to change that later on you'll see you'll see and Bochi Bochi is just doing her own thing as per usual and unironically photo bumping is actually a really good composition trick so props to her now I never wait until the last moment to put in the colors for pretty much one reason the colors help us draw much better sketches and when you think about that we rarely see things in terms of lines like when do you focus on the lines when you are looking at whatever in your daily life we see big masses and colors play a huge role in it it helps us recognize what we are seeing so when we are drawing instead of playing against our instinct we just play to whatever we are good at we just put in the color as early as possible so that we can have a much better grasp of the figure much better grasp of the structure it helps us to draw more accurate figure it helps us to make better sketches it is still sketchy as hell but the important thing is we put down everything that we want to be here as soon as possible so that then we can fiddle around with the details going to skip through that not much to say about this it's just about putting down the final lines it's about polishing the design making clearer decision like the faces instead of just drawing lines going nowhere we break down the lines so that we have different points of connection we give context to our lines similarly for the hair we design each individual chunk so that when we are doing the line art or the base color we'll have a much better idea of what we are going to draw of where our lines are going to land we need to figure out the design problem so that later on we'll have an easier time and just like the colors we throw in light and shadow as soon as possible we design our first shadow layer for our base forms Bochi in the front doing weird things so she received the most light which makes sense she's the star she's always the star and similarly the members behind also receiving light and considering the fact that the light is mainly coming from the right in this case so Liu receiving more light than the other members and then we can also decide the shadow on the hair as well we can design the shape a little bit and that's going to come in handy later on and the outfit as well or on the body when you look at the reference you rewind that to the beginning of the video you'll notice that the shadow is actually different it's actually really different i like to make the shadow or at least the shape of the shadow much clearer than it needs to be why i just like that and people ask how do you do light and shadow most of the time it's just about making shit up there's nothing too deep about it maybe maybe you look at how anime does that once again it is a what question what kind of light pattern that you want to use so maybe you can understand how it works but most of the time it's just about memorizing the pattern and the shadow or rather the light on the body is a really directional triangle and that matches the body structure 
is completely imaginary, but it works. It's much more interesting and it helps us to identify the structure of the body. Now, moving on to the line art, there's not much I want to talk about that. We have already shown a lot of construction of it, a lot of polishing of the shapes and line design. But I do want to talk about the hair, especially the border effect or rather the manual border effect that I like to use. The idea of it is basically you use a painterly style to draw or to paint with a bigger brush. And then you have the border effect which you can turn on on the, I think it's the layer property tab. I just set a shortcut for that. So, and the purpose of that is that it provides a temporary line art so that you have a clear idea of what's happening. You can use that, but that's usually a little bit wonky. So instead of using the border effect, you'd later turn off the border effect and then copy pasta your base layer. So for example, in this case would be the hair layer. You copy pasta that, you turn it to black or whatever color that is darker than the base layer, enlarge the edges to maybe two pixels, three pixels, depends on the size of your, of your canvas. And then you place that underneath and then you've got the line art automatically done for you. Well, not exactly, but you know what I mean. Or you can subtract the base layer and then put it on top so that the extension of it would just sit tightly outside of your base layer. Or for whatever reason, you don't like it, you think that's too diabolical, you want to call for a ban. And then you have the option to draw that line, to draw the line art manually. Because now you have a better sketch. You have an even clearer path to follow to pinpoint your lines. You literally can't lose with this method. It's so flexible. If, if there's a Nobel Prize for art, I'm getting it because of this method alone. I've thought about it multiple times, but yeah, the nutshell is you use the painterly approach and the line art approach together. It's like MMA basically. So, you know, you need to learn striking and grappling. A striker who doesn't know grappling would just get immediately thrashed, absolutely demolished by a grappler. And a grappler who doesn't know any striking would probably just get knocked out before you have a chance to bring the fight to a ground game. So I would say why be a one-trick pony when there's just so many alternatives out there. Now as overpowered as this combo sounds, it is not a cheat code that can immediately give you top-notch design. You notice that my lines or the shapes are predetermined. They're premeditated. How did I get the idea for this design? Well, I just copied that from somebody just did my study. And this technique only takes away the technical problem of doing line art. It's basically a way to compensate for sketchy line work. So once you have a clearer design, but you don't have clean art, you can use this method. And like I said before, this method solves the how to draw line art problem. Basically by not drawing line art, it doesn't solve the problem of what line art to draw or what shape to use. That, once again, you need to do your own study. You need to find the kind of shape, the kind of composition that you like. Now we're copy pasting the shadow that we did earlier in the sketching phase to each individual base layer. And the idea is that by clipping them to the layers, only the shadow on that layer would be relevant. And then we can change the color of the shadow. The designs are again sketchy but at least they are functional. We can polish the shapes later and subsequently the colors as well. I always make last minute change. It doesn't matter. We are doing it digitally. And also you have to consider that the way we interpret colors is kind of weird. We perceive color based on the surrounding colors. In short, it doesn't make sense to decide the color right from the get-go. He said that and yet he rendered the face which is not ideal. I didn't even recall that but yeah, right now design the light and shadow. And speaking of layering, there's literally no drawbacks whatsoever by splitting up your layers. Your PC isn't going to choke itself simply because you have a million of layers. Well, a million might be a little bit too much but it's not going to collapse simply because you have a few hundreds of them. unless. You don't recognize that 
you can organize your layers or you don't know that you can snap to layers by pressing Ctrl and Shift. And in general, I think there are only two kinds of artists who can justify not splitting up their layers. Either A, you are an experienced artist, you come from a traditional background. That means that you have already established your method of drawing. Say you do oil painting, right? You paint in layers, but you paint the background first and then to the foreground or from dark to light color. You're certain that you're not going to make huge mistakes. Oil painters, they also paint in layers. The only difference is that we are doing it digitally. That means that we can just pull out the layers in between and then make changes on them. So if you are an experienced artist, you don't need to do that, then fair enough. Or B, you are a genius. You are one of those people who can solve a complex math problem simply by looking at it. You don't need any drafting. You don't need any steps whatsoever. And then you can immediately tell the answer. What's your math level, mate? Oh, level Asian. That kind of stuff. And the layers, everything you do is about problem solving. So if you have the layers, that means that you can backtrack what you did and then you can fix your errors. You can understand what you know and what you don't know, which is the most important part when it comes to learning. And that also in line with my principle, reducing complexity, ironically, by making it seemingly more complex. It is a safeguard against shitty decisions. So what kind of layers do we have here? We have the base layer and then we have shadow one and we did shadow two. And now we are doing the highlight. When I'm doing the highlight, I thought I had the yips here. For those who aren't aware, the yips are basically a sudden and unexplained sort of loss of ability to execute certain skills. I think it is most common among athletes, especially the golfers. Basically, think of it as you're playing Skyrim and then you accidentally hit the legendary button. So you just reset your skill. Except it doesn't make your leveling up easier. I was like, Jesus Christ, my brain was just like, what? And it turned out I just used a different method. Anyway, it just scared the crap out of me and it uncovered a problem of mine. Which is going to be problematic, but oh well. Oh, and I want to talk about the expression. You know, Leo doesn't laugh that much in the anime. But then I look at the reference, the reference of the actors. The actor, she laughs so beautifully. So I thought it's just unfair to draw her without the laugh, without the smile. Should I draw her laughing or should I not? But at the end of the day, I'm the artist, so I can just low and do whatever the hell I want. So this painting might not be lower accurate, but who cares? And I want all of them to have slightly different facial expressions. It's a funny painting and they all laugh and they laugh differently. kita got the biggest laugh and then Nijika. Nijika, when you look at the reference, hmm, it's okay, but I want her to be laughing more. And that's also more in character. So I'm trying to draw the eyes in the way that they are squinting a little bit more. So they are smaller, but I don't know, it's really difficult to, to get. I've never drawn anything like this before. And I could have just drawn the most basic one. The ones that I talked about in the beginning of the video. I could have done that. But no, I decided to challenge myself a little bit to make something slightly different. And that's really what it comes down to. To me, it is not just finishing a painting. I don't want it to be a simple asset flip. I don't want everything to be the same. It is a challenge to me. It is a game. And it's wonderful. I like to do this kind of shit. Just change things up. Ah, I can do this. Maybe I can solve this problem with a different method. Oh, it doesn't work. That kind of stuff. And if you look at the reference, you'll be like, wait, it's different. And then I'm like, ah, I just changed that. I think it's cool and hopefully maybe getting a laugh as well. But I'm still not very happy with the design of the facial expression, the eyes and stuff, the size of it, etc, etc. Especially the color, the rendering is a little bit off. So it wouldn't surprise me that I like I would just make huge changes afterward. But at least because the layers are separated, it wouldn't be that difficult on the technical side of it. I would still have to figure that out. I would still have to test that. But yeah, it's about making decisions. It's about making creative decisions. It's, and it's going to be fun. Figuring this out is exciting. And I want to talk a little bit about the outfit. I've never drawn sunglasses before, at least not seriously. 
So I still haven't quite figured out the shading of it, but the base layer, however, is quite interesting because that's another practical application of the manual border effect. So the idea here is that, like what we have done before, we have got the base layer, and then we copy paste that, and now we have got the yellow layer for the frame. And then by control clicking the thumbnail of the brown layer, we have select all the non-transparent pixels on that layer. And then we use that selection on the yellow layer so that we can delete all the extras. And then we put that on top of the brown layer and rinse and repeat. We have not only got the perfect frame for our sunglasses, but also the line art. And the effort required is basically drooling on your keyboard. And by the way, another funny thing about Botsy here is that if you look at the reference, the head is turned slightly to the right. I wanted to capture that, but I seem to have failed to do that. And I think it's because of the sunglasses. It's like we are looking at the head from the front. And then if you look at the headpiece, it's suggesting that we are looking at it from the left. So the more you look at it, the weirder it gets. So just don't look at it and hopefully nobody would notice. And then we check out Liu's outfit. If you zoom into the reference, we can see that it's some sort of pentagon net. And no one in the right mind would just draw that freehand. So I found this race base image material, something along those lines from Clip Studio Paint Official. And because it's an image material, that means that we need to rasterize the layer to do some crazy maneuver, some free transform. And I'm now trying the liquify feature. That's the first time I'm doing this shenanigan, so I'm still trying to figure it out. Maybe there's a better way to do it. I don't know. So what I'm trying to do is basically trying to move it in a way that it fits the body structure. I think I've done goof here and I'll just do it again. And that's one of the biggest problems of self-learning. You basically have no allies, so you just can't tell. You have no one to tell you if that's right or wrong. And that's also why Kita Chang and Botsi can admire and rely on each other. It's just the most beautiful thing in the world. Anyway, I'll work this out off screen, and that's pretty much the idea of it. And now we've finished the base layer and the light and shadow design. Well, not 100%, more like 90%, 88%, 85% maybe. And then we can finally work on the color and the rendering. And I will be focusing on the hair here. I like to use slightly muted color and with a strong emphasis on light and shadow. The contrast here is already quite strong and I'm pretty happy with the color choice we have here. And just like what we did with the sunglasses, we can control click the thumbnail to select all the non-transparent pixels and then we add two transition for two layers, the light and then the shadow. And we are using an airbrush for that so that we can get the smooth transition. One good trick is use the masking layer. So if you mask out the light area, it will only affect the shadow area and vice versa. So this is basically the setup. Simple yet effective. And then there's just lots of polishing, fixing the base layers. You may have noticed already the base layer is not ready, well it's ready functionally but it's not perfect, got a lot of rough edges. So you can see how my line art doesn't define my base layers, it is to enhance them. And most importantly, they can easily be altered. Oh and another thing that I noticed is that I seem to have a good sense of the proportion of the entire body. but. I immediately shut my bed when doing half body. So I struggled quite a bit when trying to get the right proportion for Liu and Nijika. But regardless, it's good XP. And that's pretty much all I would like to share. I'm now at the last stage of the project where all major creative decisions have been made and all that's left are really just issues that I need to fix. And it's the time when I make a huge laundry list of all the blockers and to employ all kinds of productivity techniques, doing a 5 minute stand up, time boxing myself, keeping myself moderately distracted by playing something in the background so that I just won't go completely mental, and really just push through the quality assurance. I don't want to drag the video too long so I'll just finish it off screen. It's a bit mediocre by my standard but it's fine.
I'll still give it a 7 out of 10 for the efforts. And that's about it. I hope you learned something new and I'll see you next time.